this Monday night, first Monday of September. Watch how fast it goes. Dana Durnford is standing by up in British Columbia. Yoshi is uh, on an airplane somewhere, flying somewhere. Uh, Yoshi always on airplanes flying, it seems, when he's uh, busy, and he's busy most of the time. Dana, how are you up there? How's it going? Let's, let's get caught up with you. You really, you were, uh, you, 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 you turned on the mic. Oh, yes. Okay, you, put, you, you pushed it over the limit. I think uh, so. <laughs> and you've been kind of out of it for a couple of weeks, resting, trying to recover. Tell us what happened. I went, uh, well, I tried to go up north and visit all the communities, but it was too rough. I could have shot across, but I wouldn't have made it back. And I probably You went out on the, on the Zodiac, on the boat. And, on the boat. And so I pulled the plug on it at the north of Vancouver Island and ran down to the west coast of Vancouver Island and went up to Banfield. And Banfield is a marine research science center, but it's a big um, bay. It's, uh, it's a mouthpiece. 40 it's miles out. It's a mouthpiece is what it is. And so the, I got, yeah. um, it's about a two kilometer hike up to the research center from the community of Banfield, which is a population of about 100 people. And uh, really, was, how big, how big is this uh, Banfield? How many people are employed there? Oh, Banfield's huge. Uh, it's yeah. 71 universities supporting it. I don't know how many people are employed there, but it's a sprawling one kilometer uh, yeah. facility. Right. It's one, one kilometer from the gate to the office. There's a sign there that tells you one kilometer. But um, uh, and the guy that's further than I tried to walk in 15 years. And so I dre- it was summertime, so I dre- it was in the shade. It's all the shade going up there. But anyway, it starts off with, I went out there and done the coastline that day. I, I got halfway out that night. It got so windy, I had to anchor up and hide away. Got up in the morning, and it was okay at the fuel dock, and then ran back out and caught the low tide at 10 a.m. or so. It was a very low tide. And I counted the... Uh, I counted nine or ten species, but we say fourteen, and there should be seven thousand two hundred species. So I was determined to go in and ask them a simple question, just to make my president felt where where are the rest of the species? And uh, they see me come and come out and, and told me to get out of here. Told me I was barred, I wasn't allowed there. Who who told you that? I don't want this, names, but who were these people? This Staff? was administration. Administration, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that was pretty. Uh, pretty crazy that you you know that they've done that to me how the hell would they know who you were just because you were it's it's a public uh this is uh they're a uh what do you call them a non-charitable organization right and so they did and they're public and so i had every right to go up and ask them a question oh of course yeah every right in the world and i exercised that right and for that i was humiliated and chased off the property and one of the, there was two students, I guess, or something, faculty, were uh, just outside the building. And I asked them, do you ever seen anybody get barred from this facility? And they begrudgingly answered me. I, but I had asked them, um, how many species are they supposed to have out there? And I said, 7,200. He said, uh, how many? I said, 7,200. He said, what are they? This is, you know, at the facility. <laughs> and so, you know me, I just rattled them off the majority of them. Uh-huh. But the Arrigans and, and that Hubers. But anyway, on the way back, my leg, both legs gave out. Um, and I ended up just, to, I was just at that pinnacle where I'm, I was on the other side of a hill. It's a very steep hill. Anybody coming over it would have ran me over most likely. But a truck came over and seen me stopped. This was forestry. And I was paralyzed with pain at this stage. I couldn't get in the truck. And when I finally got in the truck, I was in so much agony. They couldn't move the truck. I was screaming in pain for a good five minutes. Uh, aye, aye, all, aye. The, all the way to the wharf, I was screaming in pain, mm-hmm. agony, and then I went out and uh, anchored off and went to sleep out of it when I finally got out there. But when we got back to the wharf, I fell down on the ground for seven or eight minutes, couldn't move, and uh, that was really something, you know. That just took it took the entire good out of me. I came home and tried to recover, uh, and it was a slow, you know, I'm recovered as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you have uh, leg braces, right? No, I'm standing on my own. I was in a hospital bed 10 years and five mm-hmm. years in, in mm-hmm. a wheelchair trying to get out of it. So you and don't have to wear the braces now, but you've right. got to go very carefully. I got it. Yeah, my bones are very fragile yeah. on top because yeah. of the injury. It was a diving injury. I'm full of uh, bubbles from mm-hmm. my bones mm-hmm. and body. But um, anyway, so yeah, there was 14 species. 
Uh, and say there was a couple of hundred boats there, uh, sports boats. There was no birds flying over them, no birds alongside them, no birds in the water or something like that. And there was a group of 250 seagulls was on a rock, and they weren't eating. They weren't pecking at anything. They were all just sat there. It was the strangest thing you ever saw. And I seen one whale to me. It looked like it was really skinny. And uh, that was a big salmon run goes up uh, Port Alberni, up that major area. It's a huge run. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a well-known spot. And so uh, the insects were next to nothing. It was really hard to find anything under the five algaes. Uh, and so it was surreal. That's the end of it, for sure. The algaes no are the, the oldest life form, perhaps, on the planet, certainly in, in terms of vegetation. They've been around for three billion years. A Russian scientist after Chernobyl worked and created this combination of uh, four of the most potent algaes, red, yellow, uh, blue, and green, on the planet. And they help detoxify, they can chelate radiation out of you, but they also build your immune system like nothing else. And uh, he was on last week, we talked about that. You mentioned algae, and they're going to be around. They, they're tough. They've been around. They'll probably be the last to go, if any, if they go at all. But that's interesting. Well, there's supposed to be 700 species uh, yeah, out there. Yeah, there's in particular, a lot. there's less than six or seven at best. And they were the same ones for the whole coastline. They're the hanging around. Yeah, that's the end of it, though. They can't survive. And so it's just... It's unbelievable that we're still talking about it in this context where this planet has not gone to battle against Japan's reactor. Five and a half years, Dana. Yeah. Five and a half years. It won't go another five and a half. No, it won't. We're still talking. I still get uh, email from people. Thank you. If you want to report in and tell me what you're seeing or not seeing in terms of uh, bugs, insect life, uh, where you are, uh, especially birds. I can go outside where I am in Oregon. And there are trees and everything. Not hear one bird. Nothing. No birds. And I don't see any ants anymore. I see a few. I saw one ant today. I used to see different species of ants, hives, colonies of them. No more. I don't see any insects to speak of. No flies, no house flies. This is nothing left. A few dragonflies, because they've been around forever too, but not many. There used to be dozens and dozens and dozens. Now you might see one or two. So it's it's all. There's probably thousands of species. So. It's not there. And you look at car, I looked, looked at car windshields whenever I go, where there are other cars, parking lots. Where, you know, they don't have squash bugs on them, no bug splats on them. Everybody gets that. Everybody understands that one. That's something that resonates, don't it? Yeah. The insects yeah, on the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you look in the... Fukushima catastrophe box, radiation on the right column at rents, and the very top story is bugs and birds are gone. And you can read the emails from people, and if you'd like to contribute, uh, by all means, write up your observations and send them in. Right, and then the mountains with the glacier ice is gone. That's such a significant one that is easy to That's identify huge. For That's people. huge. That's huge. That's huge. And and the global warming alarmists are not freaking the completely out about it, using it as a, as a tool to bludgeon any opposition, and so which because they know they can't trace it to uh, anthropogenic in the context of like cardboard tin cans and pop bottles. It's a direct result of the emissions from the reactors in Japan. This this is unbelievable. Uh, and when I say Japan reactors, I'm not talking just 400 kilometers of the coastline was put through a wood chipper. There was all kinds of nuclear holding sites throughout that area. Common spent fuel pools were underground. Uh, it's really something that's going on here. And can't, look, look can't, at it. I yeah. can't blame them. They can't. They're denied no. uh, their birthright to know what's happening around them. The government lies. And as we know, the government measures all the time. The water, the air, they know what's going on. Right. They're not going to tell us. So. They did so. The U.S. sailors, I mean, they weren't rescuing people 100 miles offshore like they claimed that these sailors were 100 miles offshore. No. They were, they were in on the beach. They were in, they were in planes. They had a dozen uh, jet engines had to be changed because of radiation. These people were right in the thick of it. The helicopters, the crews were picking people right off the shoreline. And so they were going in on the beaches with these big uh, vessels. There was many vessels were sent down there. It wasn't just the USS Ronald Reagan. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and so they got massive. They only needed one dose. 
You didn't need to be there all day, every day. You only need to be there a minute and get into those plumes. You know, an interesting story was that the sailors on the Reagan digital watches, they all stopped at the same time. And oh, that's you know, interesting. The original plume, well, nothing will be as bad as the original explosion, but this thing just keeps melting. There was um, there's a story out there right now about safe release TEPCO advisor says for the water into the ocean. And this is by a known crank, uh, Dale Klein. And Dale, what, you know, I got, I'm doing a video on him, but one of the things he says to the NRA staff, because he's NRA, he's a nuclear scientist, he says the safest plane never flies, the safest car never drives, and the safest nuclear plant never runs. In other words, he, he conflates them together, but the, the reply for that would be, we don't need terrorist laws to protect a plane crash, and we don't put cars in sarcophagus for millions of years, and we don't have the technology to stop Chernobyl, but we'll invent it soon because we have to deal with Fukushima before it kills this planet. Well, it's too late for that one anyway, but this is the what you're up against these public speakers. Now, the same person is now saying, because he's TEPCO's advisor, that it's okay to release... The, the radiated water I mean in one sense they kind of got to because they got to stay on the site and in another sense they can build facilities and transfer the water there but on the other side that if they have a big earthquake there are all these things because we know it's duct tape and plastic pipes it falls apart you won't be able to get that's back right. on the site that's right they, to... they're going to dump they're probably already dumping those tanks at night I believe so I don't believe there's anything in the tanks I think they're all empty and if the air full, they're full of just normal water that they put in there to fill it up so that knows you Or, or seawater, something. Who knows? Well, the neutrons in the x-rays coming out of this stuff, see, you can't walk past it. Even those big steel uh, containers can't contain it because the elements are so... Uh, and there's particles of the rods, of the pellets and everything else going into right. those tanks. You're sucking it up as it, from the reactors. They're, they're pumping water down through the reactors. They're sucking it back up. And so this is unbelievable stuff. Like you say, there was workers who had their legs burnt from just walking in a, years, a couple of years back. We don't get any more reports of anything at uh, Daiichi. Nothing. We used to get reports from some of the workers who would quit, or at least they'd try to get the word out. We don't hear anything anymore. The, the well, last, workers usually die shortly after anyway. They're on, most of them are all gone. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you a radiation story over here. I can't prove it, but it's interesting. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. I had it up for three days. That uh, the SpaceX SpaceX rocket at uh, Cape Canaveral, which was on a launch pad preparing to launch an Israeli satellite. Did you see that story? I did so, yeah. Okay. A UFO, just in daylight. And this is not at launch time. This, this rocket didn't explode on launch. This happened at least 24 hours before it was to be launched. A UFO, a clear, unidentified flying object, a machine, a round orb, showed up behind the rocket, as you look at it from whoever was taking the, the footage, behind the rocket, and that rocket at the top stage, right where that uh, Israeli package was, which is, they call it a product, oddly enough, exploded. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear, connect the dots, uh, whoever was flying that little round orb uh, came there to destroy that rocket and its payload. Whatever the Israelis have been working on left them to say that uh, what they said was, and I, if I can find this exact quote, I don't think I can now, but uh, it was something like, we have suffered an extremely big loss. Uh, let's see, I had it here somewhere. Well, I'll find it somewhere. Let's see. Hold, just give me 30 seconds here. Okay. What we think may have been in that Israeli product, they called it, uh, is something with plutonium in it. It may have been a space-based nuclear weapons system they were putting up. Uh, it left them... The direct quote was, Israeli space agency says, satellite loss a major blow. So they have been working on this for years. Two, three, four years? Five. We don't know. It was clearly something that was not kosher. Another story, uh, ET UFO destroys Israeli weaponized satellite 
on SpaceX rocket. Now that's another interesting read. I've got all these up. You find them in headlines. The bottom line on this was I got a phone call from somebody who lives in Florida, and this resident said, "Did you hear about the radio broadcast here?" And I said, "No." And I was told that right after this explosion, within、mm, five or six hours, all the local and regional radio stations in that part of Florida began broadcasting a message, which said. And by the way, when this rocket went up, it left apparently an enormous black trail of smoke up into the air and out over the ocean. Very, very dark, very foreboding. The radio announcement said about the rocket. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Don't worry. Be happy. There's no danger to public health or welfare from that rocket blowing up on the launch pad. And they went on and, and fleshed out a little bit more. And then they said at the end of this radio ad, this is what I'm being told now. And if you see anything in the area on the ground that looks unusual or odd or like it might be part of this this exploded rocket, don't touch it under any circumstances and call the local authorities immediately. Now, what does that tell you, Dana? You know, I thought about this and. One of the conclusions, not that it's necessarily right, and it doesn't matter, I guess, but was that it's a lot of money、uh, for those packages, and so if they fake the package, they got all their money, it doesn't go up. If it goes up, it doesn't work, then they're in trouble.、Uh, but I mean, they're notorious for ripping off stuff too. On the second side, I read the stuff about the plutonium. Everybody on the planet ended up with a little tiny bit of plutonium into them allegedly.、Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it could be on purpose, and it could be like you that, said. That was clearly a,、uh, at the very least, in my opinion, from judging by the urgency of this radio message, which went out over n- numerous stations, was a plutonium-fueled something or another, whatever that product was, and it could have been anything. We know the Israelis are treacherous. We know they'll do anything to solidify their control. They're blackmailers. We know about the Samson option. This could have been、uh, like a merved warhead on a rocket, which has ten independently targeted nuclear bombs. This could have been a merved vehicle、oh, yeah, to go into it orbit. It could have been a Palestinian drone that shot it down, right? Looking like a, a brown object. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> But the bottom line is, this is、uh, this was clearly a very highly classified military weapons technology that was blown up by an a UFO, the misery machine in full control. Yeah. And now Syria started right after Fukushima. There was all kinds of where Apple died that same year. Steve Jobs. There was just endless headlines that year. Very big big actors and stars dying. It was. And、uh, the war has gone on ever since, and all the focus goes straight to Syria, and rightly so in a lot of ways, because it's horrible what they got done and what they're continuing to do, and the justifications. And it's all、uh, the United States and NATO and the West, and、yeah. they're, they're provoking Russia.、Uh, I'm surprised Russia has been able, Putin leadership、uh, remarkable. I'm surprised they've been able to withstand all the pressure, all the barbs, all the jabs. The West clearly has been ordered to、uh, to ignite a war with Russia. Yeah, that's no, that's, that's that's for fifty years. That's been the same conversation, and ultimately we'll see that'll be the end of the planet because they'll they'll say, okay, well it's time to pull the trigger, guys. Let's pull the trigger on each other, and they'll say they'll get together and eat a bunch of caviar, the last caviar on the planet, probably.、Mm. That's this is a it's to control opposition, control left, control right, extreme left, extreme right, far left, far right. And、uh, like we no longer live in, a, in we live in a jungle instead of just organized.、Um, it's, like the system is not supposed to, the, the government is not supposed to be doing what they're doing. The media is not supposed to be protecting them. The lobbyists are not even supposed to exist. The universities are supposed to be there for knowledge instead of being locked behind a paywall. We're feeding everybody GMO and then well, working the planet. Locked behind a paywall. That really sums it up. We think of our universities as、uh, our leading intellectual probes into the future and to make our lives better, but they're not, not at all. No, four thousand three hundred peer review studies a day. Seven or eight of them will get loose, and they're really bad ones. But we'll suck it up, 
and the rest of them are locked up behind us for Springer and Wiley's paywalls. And so knowledge is hard to come by. It's, even though the internet is wide open, it's still it's not what it's supposed to be. And then we have every day 29,000 children starving to dead or dying of uh, illnesses, diseases that are easy to fix with just salts like uh, pneumonia. Yeah, diarrhea. and yeah. Let's, let's not forget the eight years of the uh, Clinton administration. Over Ooh, half yeah. a million, 500,000 largely Iraqi children and women were killed by the Clintons because of the no-fly zone and the cutoff of all medications. They couldn't get anything. And they died. 500,000 minimum died under the Clinton regime. Genocide. And how many have died in Afghanistan? Two to three million. How many have been killed in Iraq since Bush 41? Two to three million. Welcome back. Had your long night. Dana Dernford is with us. Uh, Yoshi is... Uh, en route, flying from here to there, somewhere in Southeast Asia. And we're talking about Fukushima radiation, the extinction event that is underway now. It's undeniable, and it has been first assayed and tagged uh, by the prolific research and risk of his own life that Dana Dernford has put out uh, for all of us. Things that, in many cases, the government is well aware of, but will never tell us. Dana found out on his own, uh, nuclear nuclear proctologist, nuclearproctologist.org. You can click on Dana's name and go right to the site. Uh, you have built back, I assume, a great deal of material there that you were forced to take down for a while? No, I got 300 uh, videos, presentations taken down that won't go back up. But they're all over the Internet. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm. thank goodness in that context, at least yeah. they're out there. Yeah. But I had 24 hours to purge my site, and then I had to purge everything on the Internet uh, with their names on it from Woods Hole and the University of Victoria because they're the two biggest public speakers. You're not allowed to criticize those people. It's just to search. They're not going to go to court. I'm sure of it. They're not going to show up. I'm sure of that. And so this was – but, you know, we still got three – in two weeks' time, I got uh, – on the 28th, 21st, 22nd, I'm going to be in, at trial six hours a day. And so – I would like nothing better than to go to trial. I would love nothing better to get them on this set. Oh, my. And uh, I'm not going to get that opportunity for what? To, to, you know, what are they trying to accomplish mm-hmm. by doing all this to me besides trying to destroy my name? That didn't work. Trying to wreck me. They're trying to break your spirit and make you go right. away. Yeah, I guess so. And, um, and try to drive everybody away. It's hard to say what the hell because it doesn't make any sense. Oh, they did. Look, they've got their... Uh, the government has its paid trolls and shills on the Internet uh, saying bad things about anybody they want to put in disfavor somehow. Uh, they certainly done it to me. Uh, yeah. Oh, you can find crap These on me that thugs. there's no, no basis in reality at all. Unbelievable thugs, man. They are. It's They're unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Now, we got to, like you say, we got an extinction event and we got to move off the coastline and uh, right through North America. Everybody's going to have to get off this coastline. And, and you know, as I, I read though, Dana, it's not the extinction, is it, it extends all the way across the country now. Right. I'm, I'm talking more about it's a direct right there at the ocean. You're right oh, if you're right on the shore, oh, you don't want to be and there. And anytime about the superstorms that will come. Yeah, if you're point in a marine country. layer, you don't want to be in a marine layer. Right. And because it just keeps flowing into your community all the time, even yeah. if you don't see it, it's still there right. on the coastline. Sure. Yeah. Well, the morning dew, the fog, and everything else. Uh, but it's the temperature inversions and everything else. That's, and it's all the moisture and the salt for 200 kilometers inland. You want to be on the other side of the Rockies if you can, uh, but there's nowhere to hide. In, in, but it's better than be somewhere where it's not totally nuts and where you might not. You know, these super storms are real. We never seen nothing like this 200 mile an hour sustained winds hitting land and ripping mm-hmm. up provinces uh, like mm-hmm. the Philippines. 40 provinces torn right out of the ground. 30 million trees turned into projectiles, and uh, gushing 225. If that hit California, that hit any city in North America, it's done. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. you're going to get it. Then it's too late, and then it's, then you're going to have to evacuate. Then you won't want to stay there. You'll be wanting to run away. We've seen that. In Fiji, we've seen that in uh, New Mexico when these winds hit. We've seen it uh, in uh, five storms in the Pacific Ocean after Fukushima. 
And so I, I watched one story about the Philippines where they asked the villagers where they're going to rebuild. And he said, well, if we're going to have storms, like this was the sense of it. Why would you want to rebuild here? Right. Right? How, you know, barely survived that one. The children are still terrorized. And an update on that Philippine story, storm was that the children are still terrorized every time they hear wind or hear about no a storm. No kidding. Yeah, they're still terrorized by it. Well, that, well, that was, storm was enormous in size. I remember it was and, huge. Right. Right, like a, a uh, it was like a tornado, but a hundred miles wide. Where right. a tornado, a big one, would be uh, three quarters at best. Yeah, and that would only last for six minutes. This lasts for three hours, and then it went on to Vietnam, but it never lost any speed. And it's a hundred mile wide, a hardcore, but three hundred miles wide yeah. altogether. These are unprecedented. Yeah, if that hit California, I mean, it'll it'll mm-hmm. raise that city completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for 300 square miles as it's moving for hours. And the winds and were clocked at uh, 200, were they clocked at 2? 200, 225 uh, gust, 200, uh, 195 steady. And I have around 10 video clips of the wow. media talking about it. I strung them together and put them up on my website. But uh, you go to uh, Wikipedia, it says 155 mile per hour. But I got all that document documentation of it mm-hmm. when it originally happened. That's the numbers. Mm-hmm. And but that was the same thing for Venutu, for uh, Fiji, for New Mexico. And for some reason, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head tonight. But uh, this is a real deal. The ocean is warming up because of so much radiation in it already and so much going into it constantly. It's falling out of the atmosphere. Even if everything stopped coming out of the reactors, it would take 100 or 1,000 years for it to fall out of the upper and lower right. troposphere. Right, yeah. and it's being pumped up constantly. And you know that the Japanese have not stopped with their insane incineration program. They're still doing it. Yeah, that's They're- a great point. I cover that. They're burning radioactive waste, uh, friends, in large city municipal incinerators with these enormous stacks that go up, chimneys, smokestack. They burn waste, and they're all the cities were told by the government, the central government, you have to do your part. In other words, you have to take your share or a share of the radioactive debris and burn it up so it goes away. Are they nuts? Are they crazy? A child would tell you that doesn't work. And we know the forest fires and the automobile pollution, industrial pollution adds to the American Canadian yes, pollution yes. indexes. And they're yes. huge particles. What we're talking about is tens of thousands of times smaller. Good point. Right, right that they're burning in those incinerators are burning at 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, not like an automobile at low temperatures, 160 or something. And so uh, the particles are smaller and they can travel a lot further that way, but it's a lot hotter, so they go a lot higher. Uh, but but uh, if you look at Chernobyl, if you look at Fukushima, for instance, in Chernobyl, uh, at Fu- at Chernobyl, uh, the biota, the insects, the bacteria and everything disappeared rather quickly. And so forest fires are much more scarier down there. But also there was no, uh, it's like, why do the people going to feed the pets in Fukushima really is because they will starve the, because the birds and the butterflies and the majority of this Things that like a cat would catch or eat are gone. And this is uh, emblematic of nuclear. It just consumes everything and it spreads all the time. Chernobyl gets bigger all the time, even though they have an exclusion zone. It still gets much bigger. There's just outside of Fukushima and Nara, Naraha, N A R A H A, 10% of the population moved back in there. I was covering it today. And I, mm-hmm. if you go look it up on uh, Google search, Mm-hmm. Uh, what you'll find is in big black bags where they got 30 million of those bags in that whole area. 30 but million. Naraha, yeah, Naraha, Naraha, it got just stacks and stacks and stacks of these bags where 10% of the population moved back last year, which is about almost 700 people. Um, if you're there for a day, you'll be sick for life. And if you lived there for a year, you're, you know, it, it, this kind of stuff where they say, well, if you ingest, if you ingest an isotope, it might take 10, 20, 30, 40 years to manifest and diagnose into a cancer, but there's 1,800 diseases showing up before that. But if you're living in the environment, yeah, you're in for a rude awakening of five to 10 years. That's mo- mostly what you're going to get out of it. But people are transient. Who's tracking all of this? Who's categorically keeping an eye on all of these people and seeing what along no one of course because most of these people are transient most of these people are just bought into the narrative or just couldn't find life anywhere else and mm-hmm. lead the system and that's murder sure yeah, i mean that that is murder these are victims 
and uh, like they say, they they got a little bit of farming going on there. That's insanity. This is 20 kilometers outside, away from Fukushima. They're growing uh, cattle there, not many, just a handful of them. But that's insanity that someone might actually eat that, that that might be fed to people. This is... This is the way of nuclear. It's, it's just relentless. Every dog in every study, every animal died for 70 years, but it didn't die right away. They don't just drop dead. They don't just fall not. down. Right? But people don't see it that way. And unless that happens to you, then it's not poison in their world because it's so hard. Like you broke that bond who knows when, when you said, well, I don't trust these people anymore. And you look, because you looked at it or maybe who knows what. There was that one time where you finally came to this conclusion that I just really can't trust these people. And then you find out that everything out there, you got your fate put into the whole system that everybody... Everything. Yeah, every one of them are... Uh, the only way I can describe it is public relation firms, puppet or lapdog or whatever you want to call it. But they're public. Uh, they're not there for us ever. No. And it's so heartbreaking. It's it demoralizing is. in every we're, sense We're of brought up with such a lie. Uh, Great. That fairy amazing. tale... Like, like women are brought up to think about Prince Charming is going to rescue them from their whatever. Right, right. And that uh, he's going to give them everything and big castles and the whole world is going to love them. And they grow up with that fantasy. And, and then every relationship is based upon that, even though they don't understand that and they're mature, allegedly. And now what's helps. happened, the women are being brought up to basically emasculate the men right. who don't know what their job is in society at all anymore. So it's, it's, it's a joke. Now here uh, is... We're 2016. In 2020, we just went through the dreadful Rio Olympics. The next Olympics, probably going to be the deadliest Olympics ever. Story I saw it in ENE News. Many of you saw it, I'm sure. Uh, Dana saw it. In Tokyo, they are saying now, this is television report, astronomical amounts of radiation are found in downtown Tokyo, directly outside government buildings. Horrific, and that's a quote, horrific readings where kids are playing in Fukushima. Extreme levels found where food is grown for elementary school lunches and in other areas. This is all going to be amazing. The Tokyo Olympics are going to be the Radiation Olympics. Nobody should go there. No, nobody. Nope. It's not fit for anyone. It was bad enough in Rio with Zika mosquitoes and all of that. Swimming pools. Uh, water wasn't right, and then, anyway, it was, you name yeah, it. it, didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but this Tokyo is going to just walk away from that. Well, you'll go to Tokyo. Everything is fine. You do the games; it's all fine. Go out to sushi, sushi, sushi bar, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally, it'll be ten, twenty, thirty years if that was the only exposure you're going to get. But it's not. Uh, you're getting it in this country. And understand what's going on here. It's it's that bad. I hate it. I wish it wasn't. But we began telling you five and a half years ago. In fact, a few days after the event, we began to warn you. That stuff's coming over here. Government said, nah, nah, too far, too far. I tell people to pray to their water before they drink it. Tell the water to appreciate it. Tell the water how how precious it is and how grateful you are. And what you do is just changing the structure of the water. You can do so, that. That's true. Yeah, that's fact. Uh, and that will light your blood. What is one of the biggest is cancer or diseases. Most of these are, are the foundation that would play in your blood. Your blood was plating up all the red cells and blood cells. They're glued. They weren't enough. No, they lost bioelectric they should, yeah. charge. They should, that's right. They should be like two magnets opposed to each other, right. but able to stay in that, 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 that proximity where mm -hmm, that was so. Mm -hmm. and live that's, in that's why I sleep on a magnetic mattress pad under my it's actually under my top mattress which is all 100 percent organic latex i won't have a spring mattress so i've got the latex mattress under that i have one of the you'll see the ad at, at the top at the top of the page there again magnetic sleep look it up do the research and you can listen dr bonley explain to you you lay on that magnetic mattress pad it's negative polarity only and within 20 minutes you do a blood test before and a blood test 20 minutes later and all the blood cells are no longer stacked up like a long freight train. They're all standing off from each other. That negative magnetic polarity, that field you're in, allows the body to bioelectrically rebalance itself. It extends up 18 to 24 inches above the top of the mattress so you're in a field all night long and your body can restore and repair itself. 
and become also guarded from some of the electromagnetic death rays that are being thrown at us all the time from cell towers and, and you name it. Go ahead. I actually sleep in a uh, canopy type bed. I have a pressure relief mattress underneath me. Uh -huh. But then I, I have, I'm wrapped around in a uh, shield, a magnetic shield, so to speak, for uh, radio waves and Wi-Fi oh. cell phone waves. So if Good. I take my cell phone Good. in there, I can't get a single. But Oh, it's like a Faraday cage. What is it? Right. It just, it's, the, it's just a curtain. It's special. It's all it must uh, be, uh, interwoven. I can't remember the proper name. Well, it must it. be copper in the threads. Right. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's very expensive. It's very, uh, it helps. So it's like a mosquito active. net that comes down? It is so, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, if you can it's send right, me. Right around the whole bed. Send me at some point, if you would, the name of that product. I'd really yeah. like to uh, to know. I do that's sleep a, really good since that's a brilliant thing. It's made a huge difference for me. They put copper in with and the I, threads. And I sleep sound like a rock on top of that. I sleep. I can sleep in for the first time in my life. I think. Yeah, send well, send I, that I, along. I spent most of my life getting up three thirty in the morning since I was thirteen for eleven years and mm -hmm. going to work on the ocean. So, so I've always had that with me where I, I, I woke up by nature and I couldn't sleep in, but now I do, and it's just it's it's a relief for me. But I will do that, Jeff. Absolutely. What a smart thing. Yeah. It's, uh, it, I, I just feel so good wrapped in it anyway. It's warm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's so well, nice if we thing. could get you on a magnetic mattress pad underneath Yeah, it. no, I hear you. Just to top it all off. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's why I liked what you were saying. I just figured it would compliment what you were talking about. Absolutely. I know. Oh, I'm definitely going to get what you have. That's, yeah, that's uh, worth it. That's uh, terrific. Plus, you say it keeps mosquitoes out. Not that you get many, but it does keep them out. So. I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> look, if you can keep, so the, does have that. keep the EMF out, if you can right. actually cut that off. Do so. Uh, we're you bathed in it. Sometimes you get a single through it. There's a strong one, but the majority well, of it. Remember uh, what they're doing is they're planning to Wi-Fi the whole damn planet. So right. there's nowhere to hide from that stuff. Right. Yeah. Because you got all the smart meters all around me and everything else. So I, I do. I do notice a huge difference. There's no no ifs ands or buts about that. Wow. And that was a donation uh, from one of my listeners out there. Well, who I'm, that that you know, was a. We're going to get on this. Special. I'm going to get on this real quick. That this is fascinating. Hey, uh, Japan wants to use Pokemon Go to track visitors of Fukushima. <laughs> What's that? Japan. This is the headline Daily Mail. Japan wants to use Pokemon Go to track visitors to Fukushima, and so these people are out of control, completely and utterly, <laughs> remorselessly out of control. Yeah. And that we need to rein them in. Someone needs to rein them in. We need a superhero to show up and bash them a few of them, get them back to to being normal humans. Because they're not acting like humans anymore. And then the public relations uh, scientists, nuclear uh, scientists, they're not acting like uh, citizens no, they're not. They're of not this acting universe at all. Not no. at all. And, who, and there's no one to hold them accountable. We don't know how to hold these people accountable. We, we tell them not to do it. We, well, tell them we show the law and they ignore it. Keep it's lying. like trying to hold the Clintons accountable. It's unbelievable that the media has been saying the uh, same lie for 70 years and not able to correct it, but is able to go after uh, opponents out there and come up with endless stories about them. But when it comes to nuclear, they're not able to work out that a banana got nothing to do with it. I, I can't understand that, see? They got expert after expert after expert, and nobody's willing to challenge that. But look what you've done to me. They challenged me endlessly yeah. in major media. Oh, of course, of yeah. course. But they won't challenge the, word, the, the nuclear part itself, but they'll, they'll, they'll attack in that context. And so it's just like you got to become the media in order just to have a conversation about any subject. You literally got to become media yourself. Right. Yeah, like you've done for so long. And as you notice, so many people out there that are fighting back, are trying, are educating people. If they could just get organized, they're, they're just in little cells here and there pushing their best. Uh, this this situation in in Tokyo though, is the agency over there is called METI. That's the regulatory agency over nuclear power that is directly responsible to the people of Japan. And they're finding these these enormous amounts of radioactivity right outside the METI building. Right at their own building. <laughs> right there. Right there. They they're getting buzzed every day, so they're going to die just as quick as anybody That's else. That's right. So if that doesn't tell the world 
how stupid this industry really truly and how desperate these people really are and how dangerous that is that these people, even though they can't deny it, the experts went there and got the documentation and they walk around with their fingers and their lolly, 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 I can't hear you. Uh, this isn't maniacs. This is out of control. There's no other, like, you know, <laughs> I can't say it. You can't say what needs to be done, even though everybody knows what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. If you say it, they come bang on your door and arrest you for saying it. Right. Yeah, you know, it's not political hyperbole doesn't apply to us. It only applies to them when they're in trouble. Isn't that the truth? Well, all right. Well, so the ocean when, is over. I won't be going on the ocean anymore. That's the end of that. It's really? all done. It's You're all done. done. I'm done. Yeah, right. that, that just took the good out of me forever. And I wish it wasn't that way, but I, I guess it's like the documentary is coming, and I can't. I don't have the part that I wanted for it, and which was what I was going to get this time. And that's okay. I can make a hundred documentaries with the material I got, and I probably will. And uh, you know, I got a. I'm going into the Sundance uh, Film Festival with somebody else that done a documentary on me. There was another Belize crew up a couple of weeks ago doing a documentary. Going to enter into the Belize Film Festival. Oh, and they did. They're covering you and your work. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. It's, that's it's wonderful. Oh, oh, really? Oh, this is really good I news. I didn't know. Access. I gave my unfettered access to me in my home. Yeah. And he camped out in the garden and caught me in my early rises. The door uh-huh. The uh-huh. So, and it was a really good experience all around. And one of the people were from Fukushima um, Prefecture was a teacher at the time. And so they had moved to Belize right away and stayed there. Oh, but, they did. Yeah, because oh. they, they were in the know, I guess, right? So a yeah. lot of people had, had yeah. just flew out of there immediately. I can't remember the numbers, but America was pulling them all. They were paying for everybody to fly their families out of there. Uh-huh. Yeah, reimbursing them for it if they wanted to leave. And, you know, that documentary, it's going to be really simple. It's not going to be Dana the, the, the way I normally am. It's just a total... So I had a backup plan in case I couldn't make it up coast. And, and uh, once the court case is over in a few weeks, I'll do the final touches on it. Uh-huh. And then it's, I like to find a distributor, but I'm not, I don't really care in that context. But I am trying to find a, a major distributor. I want to get it out there on the Netflix and places like this, too. And so that's why it's chewing through everything I got to try. Well, to you got to let me nope. know when it's ready and we'll, we'll I do whatever I can to help you here. I know. I know this yeah. is crucial. I've been hoping you do this from a long time back. Yeah, it's a whole year since I've been arrested and that has just destroyed my life, but it hasn't stopped it. No. And uh, well, ultimately, you- they'll see that that was a big mistake for them. And You're an amazing, amazing things. warrior, uh, Dana. You keep it up. Yeah, you too, Jeff, my friend. Okay. Yeah, All hugs right. for you and your loved ones, everybody out there. Take care, folks. Thanks, Dana. Good night. Yeah, good night, Jeff. Dana Durnford. Um, that's really good news. That he's being honored. Uh, a couple of documentaries on what he's done, the sacrifices he's made on behalf of all of us. Uh, we come along like that very often. All right, that's Monday, and wow, we're, we're uh, off and rolling. Back with you tomorrow night. Lots happening. Hope to have you along. Talk then.